Welcome! Today I would like to talk to you about the Cornuti Seniores, an elite auxiliary unit of the late Roman army. The setting is the 3rd century and the Roman army is under heavy pressure. External menaces and internal unrest caused by political instability stretch the capability of the units. The mighty Roman Legio, the Roman legion, is under stress. The Roman legion is an heavy infantry unit, 5,000 men strong, deployed usually along the border of the Roman Empire to guard the, mm, the, the coming of uh, external forces, but is also used for uh, um, field campaigns against the enemy in attack or in this period to further the uh, ambition of some usurpers against the central uh, Roman emperor. What happens in the 3rd century is that the Roman legions must be um, able to repel attacks for several directions and at the same time they are moved around the empire to follow their uh, generals. And this uh, creates a great stretch on the Roman legions itself because uh, uh, they show to be a very large unit, uh, not very flexible, not very mob mobile. And this is a, a problem for the Roman Empire in this period. The solution is the vexillatio. The vexillatio is a detachment provided with its own vexillum, from, from hence it, its name. The vexillum is the insignia you can see in the picture. The vexillatio is sent where needed and serves in the field army or in the garrisons along the border. Theoretically, it is part of the original legio. In practice, it often becomes an independent unit. The legiones become smaller and smaller, from 5,000 to 2,000 men or even less, and sometimes disappear. In this period, the, the need for a large number of smaller units arises, and they should have the capability to perform several tasks with high mobility and versatility. In the West, Auxilia Palatina units are born. An Auxilium Palatinum is a compact unit, about 500 men, the size of a course. It is employed as infantry on the battlefield as light infantry with missiles capability and in special operations. It belongs to the Comitatus, the Imperial Field Army commanded by the Emperor or later by the Magister Militum. It is a unit of elite status and originally it may have uh, had an ethnic connotation. In the winter 298-299, the Rhine freezes. It is the border uh, from between the Roman Empire and the northern populations. Alemanni warriors cross the river to plunder the territories of the empire, and troops of the Caesar Constantius Chlorus, Constantine's fathers, repulse the Alemanni. The Alemanni try to go back to their territory, but the ice melts and the Alemanni are blocked on an island surrounded by the Romans. The Romans and the Alemanni reach an agreement. The Romans will let the Alemanni return their homes in exchange for the provision of several warriors that will serve in the Roman army. We do not know when the Auxilium Palatinum of the Cornuti was formed. They are the unit with the highest seniority among all Auxilia Palatina in the West, and they were probably among the four Auxilia Palatina levied by Constantius Chlorus among the Alemanni in the late 3rd century during the case of the frozen uh, river. Each auxilium palatinum was paired with another formed by soldiers of another ethnicity. The purpose of this choice was to further uh, rivalry among them, a positive rivalry, uh, so that each unit tried to um, out, uh, outperform the other in bravery and courage. Cornuti's twin unit were the Barchiati. The Cornuti are part of Constantius Comitatus and are inherited by his son Constantine when Constantius dies in York in 306. In 312 they follow Constantine in Italy against Maxentius and they fight at Susa and Milan and they distinguish themselves in the Battle of Verona. Verona. They are depicted uh, on the arch of Constantine Rome while assaulting the walls of the city and they can be recognized by the horns, the cornua, on their helmets next to the Numidian cavalry. After the victory at Verona, they fight along the Flaminian Way, descending upon Rome, where Maxentius is. The momentous battle is fought near the Tiber River, 
not far from the Milvian Bridge. October 28, 12 is the momentous date. Because of their performance against Maxentius, the Cornuti become one of Constantine's favorite units. Inside of the Arch of Constantine, for example, there is a shield that looks like that of the Cornuti, one of the few recognizable shields. On the top of the shield there is a winged victory, and on the bottom two dragon heads facing each other, springing from a single body. A, a 5th century steelyard weight depicting Constantine on throne holding a shield. On the top of the shield there is the Staurogram, a Christian symbol described by Lactantius, according to whom uh, Constantine had a dream before the, um, the night before the battle of uh, Milvian Bridge, in which he was told to put a Staurogram on the shields of his men. On the bottom of the shield there are two dragons' heads facing each other, springing from a single body. So we can say that after more than one century from the Battle of the Milian Bridge, Constantine is still associated to this favorite unit, the Cornuti. While the Cornuti are in the Comitatus Galliarum, and the field army of the Gauls, uh, there is a civil war between Magnentius and the Constantine's son, Constantius II. There is a very large battle, the Battle of Mursa Maior, where uh, more than uh, 50,000 men, um, Roman soldiers, die. To replenish the weakened army, each unit of the army is divided into two. The Cornuti become the Cornuti Seniores and the Cornuti Juniores. In 355, their general, Claudius Silvanus, rebels against Constantius II. Constantius sends an envoy to Silvanus, named Ursicinus. Ursicinus discovers that all Silvanus' troops are willing to fight a war for him against Constantius. All except the Cornuti and the Bracchiati, who are willing to betray him, because the Cornuti and the Bracchiati know very well that Constantius is very good at fighting usurpers like Silvanus and Magnentius. So Sicinus bribes them. The Cornuti and the Bracchiati attack the palace of Silvanus, killing his guards. Silvanus flees from a, to a chapel, but they take him out and kill him. In the summer of 357, the Romans pursue some barbarians beyond the, the Rhine, and they, um, the barbarians flee to some islands. Tribune by, by Nobaudes, as his Cornuti, wear light armor and swim across the river, using their shields as floaters. The Cornuti assault islet after islet, killing the barbarians and taking their boats to move faster. They go back to their army only after gathering a rich plunder. This episode tells us that the great Roman soldiers can swim and carry out amphibious assaults, so they are special operation units. Few weeks after the amphibious assault episode, the Cornuti Seniores fight in a field battle, on the first line. Caesar Julianus, uh, who will later become more known as Julian the Apostate, and his Comitatus force uh, the Alamanni to uh, a field battle. Alamanni have the numbers, about 30,000 against 50,000, and the uh, choice of the battlefield. Here is the scheme of the Battle of Strasbourg or Argentoratum. On the top, the Alamanni, uh, and on the bottom, the Roman uh, units, deployed on the first line with the legions and auxilia, and uh, a second line again with uh, legion and auxilia in the center, a left wing with the auxilia, and the right wing with all the cavalry. It's interesting to notice that the Cornuti and the Bracchiati form an uh, extreme right wing of the first line here. The battle begins with an attack of the Roman cavalry towards the uh, Alamannic cavalry, but they are repelled. Then uh, the Alamanni charge the center of the Roman uh, formation, and uh, they manage to plunge a hole in the middle of the uh, Roman first line, that Julian uh, manages to, to plug, uh, advancing his second line. The Romans uh, win the battle, and uh, uh, they, um, they, they have a, a, very, a very important victory in this moment. The Cornuti Seniores, on the right wing of the first line, sustained the Alamanni charge. Ammianus Marcellinus tells that they yelled against the enemy their terrible war crime that was called the Barritus. The Baritus is in the very heat of combat, rises from a low murmur, and gradually grows louder, like waves dashing against the cliffs. 
The Romans win a great victory with the loss of 8,000 Alamanni for only 243 Romans. Among them, however, there is the tribune of the Cornuti by Nobaudes. In 376, a multitude of goats crosses the Danube, spreading the plains. Two years later, they will uh, um, inflict a, a large uh, defeat on the Romans in Adrianople. But in the summer of 377, the Cornuti are outside the town of Dibaltum, on the coast of the Black Sea, together to the Scutari cavalry guards of Tribune Barzimeres and few other infantry units. The Romans are attacked by the goats. While outnumbered, they repel the attack and wait for the darkness, uh, hoping to survive the day. But suddenly, more goats arrive behind the Roman lines and they kill most of them. Interesting details that according to Amiano Marcellinus, uh, the Romans, when they were attacked at the south the city before sunset, they were building their camp for the night, and for this reason they were still in arms, according to ancient Roman military dispositions. At the end of the 4th century, both Cornuti Seniores and Cornuti Juniores belonged to the Comitatus of the Magister Peditum per Italiam. In an inscription in the catacombs of San Valentino on the Flaminia records the presence of a, in Rome of a Cornuti soldier in the first quarter of the 5th century, but later the Cornuti were transferred in the east. The Cornuti Seniores belonged to the Comitatus of the Magister Militum Presentialis, the top-ranking general of the Eastern Army, while the Cornuti Juniores are among the troops defending Constantinople in 413. We do not know when the Cornuti were disbanded, but we know they are back. This is a little uh, joke on the fact that uh, we, as an association, an reluctant association, we are reconstructing the Cornuti military and civil uh, capabilities uh, in, our, in our work. If you are interested in knowing more about the Cornuti and all the uh, Roman uh, military history of this period, I suggest uh, the, this uh, uh, paper by uh, Andrew Affoldi, Cornuti, a Teutonic contingent in the service of Constantine the Great and its decisive role in the battle at the Midian Bridge. To know more about the equipment and the way of fighting of the Roman uh, legions and uh, auxilia unit in uh, this period, I suggest Bishop and Coulson, Roman Military Equipment, 2nd edition. While for those who, who can read the Italian, I suggest Cascarino San Silvestri, L'Esercito Romano, Volume 3. I mentioned uh, Barritus uh, in, the, in the narration of the Battle of Argentoratum. Uh, there is a, a, a snippet from uh, a movie entitled The Fall of the Roman Empire of 1964, which shows a very nice reconstruction of, the, of what Barritus could have been. I will put the link in the description. Uh, while uh, um, a nice de depiction of the um, amphibious assault of the Cornuti Seniores uh, on the Barbarian Islets uh, is uh, depicted in another video uh, about the battle of Strasbourg or Argentoratum, uh, and I will put the link uh, for this video too in the description. Finally, for those who are interested in our work, uh, of our reenactment association, uh, I, you can check the website of the, our association, Sodales, uh, here is the link. And thanks for uh, listening to us.